I'm gonna play a video before we start to give a give people time to show up. We are live. We're live. So um, we're here with Kyle Rogers, who is from Botbox. And we kind of talked to him a little bit backstage prior to this. And he's talking about living the, 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 the Airbnb uh, investor life where he's traveling nationwide, trying to see some cool spots. But we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, one of the first questions we always like covering is how did you end up in real estate? Because I didn't realize you were so young, but man, how did you end up in real estate, man? Yeah, man. So um, it's kind of funny how I stumbled upon it because I just came from the sales world. I, I'm a, a door to door hustler. I, I've been doing door to door and outbound cold calls for most of my working life. And uh, I, I came up in the school of hard knocks. You know, the, my, the very first thing I sold was Kirby vacuum cleaners. Wow. Going up okay. to strangers doors, just, you, you know, completely cold. No, no uh, appointment set beforehand going in there with a vacuum cleaner and doing a demo and and uh, selling a three thousand dollar vacuum and uh, man that was like uh that was like the school of hard knocks for sales for me you learn how to make a friend quick when somebody opens their door and they're skeptical uh skeptical of you and they don't really know you know they're they're like trying to yeah. shut the door in your face and you got to immediately make a connection you got to hook them in and you got to build rapport and make a friend and that's really where i started to learn that and then i moved on to direct tv i was selling uh, direct tv became number seven top salesperson in the nation while i was working with them for their uh door-to-door -door crew but wow, dude. seven yeah number seven number seven in the nation number <laughs> yeah number seven in the nation uh won a cruise you know and and had a good time and i started to recruit and build commission only teams for direct tv so I was going to colleges and using Craigslist and using Indeed to go out, out and uh, find other people that wanted to, you know, stop stop working a nine to five and they wanted to go hustle and work as an independent contractor and be their own boss. And I was just selling that dream. But the thing is, is that that there's a ceiling, right? There, there's only so much you can make, even if you are one of the top dogs in that in that industry. So I was capping out at about thirty thousand dollars. I think my best my best year was about forty five thousand dollars, even as one of their top reps and it was just killing me. I'm like, man, this, and this is seasonal. I'm making up most of my money in the summertime, but in the wintertime, I'm not really doing anything productive. And it was just starting to wear on me. And, and I was, uh, you know, raising, raising my first daughter at the time. And I wanted more for her. I wanted to stop living paycheck to paycheck. And I'm like, what can I sell that is going to pay me bigger, uh, bigger commission? What can I sell that's that's uh, valuable? And I was looking into medical sales and insurance sales and all these things. But I I uh, came across real estate investing and uh, wholesaling to to be specific. And I was like, man, that's it. That is uh, you can make twenty thousand dollars or sixty thousand dollars from a single deal without even doing work on the property. I'm like, that's it. That's my route. So I went all in, and I burned the boats. And I, I don't suggest everybody do this. This is about five years ago. Um, that I first discovered this and, and jumped into it. And I, I quit my job at uh, DirecTV and I went 100% into investing into wholesale. Man, I burned the boat. So exactly how you feel, man. Yeah. Go ahead, Anthony. So, you, so you've had sales in your blood your whole life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no I think that's what it takes sometimes, man. I love to, to like, I'm the dreamer, right? So I love to think that you can take a person um, that's probably not the best in sales or in business and then turn them to this amazing sales machine. And I still think that's true. But I, I, if you're born with it, it's a whole different type of beast, right? If nobody had to give you instruction or teach you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I would say, you know, I, I had to learn it first. I wasn't, I wasn't a whiz when it came to sales. I had to, I had to go into it. At first, uh, when I knocked my first door, I was terrified. And, uh, but, but going through that and going through that grind 
it definitely prepared me for for this game because because real estate investing wholesaling talking to sellers it's it's all a sell everything's a sell you know and uh building a team is a sell you have to sell your team on the vision and the dream every day you know so you don't want to loan wolf it you got to start to leverage other people's work your prospects start stop being sellers so much and your prospects become your team and that's who you're spending time with and your new work through people but i didn't figure that that stuff out till later i had to fall on my face i didn't have instant success like uh some people seem to do i went yeah. six months without getting a deal when i first started wow and and it was ugly man i was doing everything i was cold calling i was uh doing bandit signs i was driving for dollars and the the, the biggest problem is i was just wasting my time on low leverage activities i wasn't i wasn't leveraging my time in a smart way i was working hard and not smart and that was that was the problem i was running into i found a mentor to bring me on as their acquisition manager uh it's paying me 600 dollars a week draw on future commission so i could at least have some float money while i was learning this game mm -hmm. and he also paid for my uh coaching and education on how to do direct mail and and he paid for this uh uh this campaign on direct mail but this is all going to come out of my commission because i made a percentage of how profitable this campaign was mm -hmm. sadly we went we went uh, uh four months in a campaign we're spending ten thousand dollars a month forty thousand dollars spent Oof. on direct mail didn't get a single deal big goose egg man that was what? that was so rough i remember sitting there with my head in my hands just just devastated done i was about ready to walk away forever but <laughs> <laughs> luckily i was able to find a couple deals i was able to make a little bit of money to where he wasn't completely in debt for lending me on this campaign and I made a little bit of money in my pocket. It's probably less than minimum wage because I was working 80 hour weeks, but I was able mm -hmm. to pocket some money and, and it wasn't from anything else I was doing like the old school guerrilla marketing. It was from online. I found a, a couple deals off of Craigslist and a couple deals off of Facebook groups. And I noticed mm -hmm. Facebook groups were a lot more um, lucrative. They, they were a lot more effective. So that's when a light bulb went off. I decided i'm like man what if i was to ditch all of this other marketing that i'm doing i'm driving for dollars and and just not using my time wisely and wasting money on gas what if i was to focus all of that time and and uh hammer down on just getting deals out of groups facebook groups they're free to post it and as soon as i did that everything changes like the floodgates opened and i had leads rushing in and at times i'd be overwhelmed with response to where i would have to stop posting so I would catch mm -hmm. up on the response. Dude, so tell me what this progression looks like. Cause I could tell you right now, um, I got my first contract 40 days into my real estate career. Never had never been to a closing, nothing. And then I, I got my first contract through a Google pay-per-click lead. Like the lady called me in the middle of the night, like at 1230 or one o'clock. And I called her, stayed on the phone with her for like an hour, but I got my first closed deal in my second contract off of bot Fox. So based on your timeline, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you weren't in real estate that long before you came up with this concept, right? So can you tell us what that progression looked like? You knew there was some juice in these deals, but how in the heck did you like figure out, like, I'm going to put this plan together and I'm going to, did you get a developer or, or did you partner with somebody? How did this happen? That seems like a, a really quick amount of time that you went from being a new guy to having this platform where, you know, where you can open the floodgates on leads. So and I you started using it for yourself first and then decided to push it out to the community or what'd you do? Yes. Yeah. I was doing it myself first and it was all manual. And I think when, when, uh, you joined bot Fox, that was back when we had a posting software, a auto posting software. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So th this was, a, this is a whole nother chapter. This is a whole nother failure. Follow it evolved Facebook. right after. Yeah. It yeah. Evolved right cause, after cause Facebook, uh, you know, just brought the hammer down and banned bots. They banned the ability to use auto posters and you could get your account shut down if you used them. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, that was something that I developed and that worked pretty good. And I think that's when you come, come on as you use the auto poster. But when Facebook brought that hammer down, I, I had to pivot. I had to change mm -hmm. the way I was doing things and, and couldn't use the software. And I, I did, I hired VA developers, you know, I was hiring people in India and the Philippines and just bringing all these people together. Cause I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to code and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but I quickly brought it together cause I got tired of doing all of the posting myself. 
And, um, you know, when, when, uh, I discovered Facebook groups for the first time, I switched to doing virtual wholesaling. And then I told my wife, I'm like, look, we can do this from anywhere. Why don't we sell everything that we own and start, start traveling in Europe, start traveling the world. Like we always dreamed. So that's what we did. We sold everything, fit the rest of what we had into backpacks and flew over to, to Italy. And we lived all across uh, Europe for six months straight while doing virtual deals in the US. Wow, that's freaking but amazing. It was, but it was a grind and that's why I developed the software because I wanted to be able to enjoy my time over there and not be posting and, and working these leads. And uh, man, it was, it was fun. I was in Rome, I was in Venice. I went over to uh, to Croatia. I went up to Prague in the Czech Republic. I lived in uh, France on the southern coast, Saint Tropez. Uh, went up to Paris. Was living in Paris for a while, and it was just this amazing journey. And when that software broke, it was kind of like it, it was it was a hit in the gut. And I'm like, okay, go back to square one. But what it forced me to do was to go back to my roots. I'm like, okay, so I know how to leverage other people's work. I know how to leverage OPW, right? Mm -hmm. Because I built commission-based teams for DirecTV. And I would sell people on the dream and have people come on without a wage. So, so they're not making money up front, right? So they're not costing a ton of money, but they're going to make money as soon as I make money. And that's that's what I did. I'm like, I'm just going to take what I was doing for DirecTV and building teams, and I'm going to bring it to this world. I'm going to bring it to uh, the Facebook group marketing realm. And I created this training platform where people come on kind of like virtual bird dogs, but they use their own Facebook account to post on my behalf. And I scaled mm -hmm. it out and I have this entire team of people that are just wanting to get in the game. They're wanting to learn and do doing this as a side hustle. And they're using their own Facebook accounts to go and source group, uh, deals and Facebook groups for me. So then I built a, an agency around this to where I help other people recruit and train their team of commission-based bird dogs to use their own Facebook accounts to go and source deals for my students. Wow. Oh, wow. That's good, man. It's, it's kind of cool that you use your, your, uh, your like uh, nine to five job, like grind. To get this going for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And you kind of and you kind of use that same model because it works and the corporate America uses it all the time, but you can use it as your own business. That's that's amazing, man. It's really cool to see, man. Because yeah. last time last time I saw Bot Fox was with Anthony, and Anthony got hooked up because me and Anthony have been together three years now. So we probably met in the beginning part of that. So it's kind of cool to see you uh, pivot because a lot of that's one yeah. thing accused about uh, what we do in general is we pivot into other things. But when you hit a wall, you just got to pivot, keep pivoting. Exactly. And, and sometimes it leads you to something better. And that's exactly what it did for me. I didn't really have uh, these breakthrough testimonials and case studies until we made this change. Once I made this change, people started making six figures in no time. I've helped several investors make six figures within 30 to 60 days. And uh, just like clockwork, I'm, I'm pumping these people out that are just absolutely killing it and they're not having to do the grind themselves. So when you put a human being into this marketing platform versus using a bot, it's a lot more personal. And it's similar to what you guys do with, with uh, your, your SMS software, you know, as soon as somebody responds, it stops a drip and then somebody can come in and have a real genuine conversation with them. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's always going to convert better. And, and that's what we discovered when we, when we made this change and man, it's just been so much more effective. Oh, that's cool, man. Um, one thing I, I kind of want to do a brief plug in because you kind of mentioned it right now is you almost got a deal using SMS in like two weeks. You signed up like two weeks ago. So it's kind of cool getting you getting traction on our stuff. Hell yeah, man. I'm just looking for the next thing. I've, I've been the Facebook uh, group guy for so long. And uh, that's that's how I've gotten deals for the last uh, few years exclusively, 100% out of Facebook groups and have have a team doing it for me. So I'm just, I'm, I'm looking to expand and, and looking what else is out there. And I've noticed that all of my successful, uh, successful students that they come to me and they're wanting something uh, to add on. The ones that are doing it with success are doing SMS. That's what, you know, a ton of people are just killing it at SMS. So I'm like, there's, there must be something to this. So I came to you guys, uh, uncle Charles, Charles Hernandez. He, he told me about you guys and uh, yeah, he got me hooked up and already working on a deal. Panama city, 
uh, Panama City Beach, right on, right on the water, right on the uh, the ocean, and and perfect for short ter- short term rental Airbnb. So uh, if we can lock it down, it's going to be something I hold on for myself. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't let go of that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I'm keeping that one. One way or another, I'm going to keep that one. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you feel that way about all of your deals, though? I'm, I'm starting to feel like now the more deals that I come across, I'm trying to keep everything. You know, because we we were wholesaling everything in the beginning and now we're trying to buy as much as possible. But then once you start buying, you're like, I want to keep this one. I want to keep this one. It doesn't make sense to keep them all, but <laughs> you yeah. feel like it. Yeah. But yeah. And that I'm one just, on the beach. Yeah. It's done. For me, it's in a line with my vision, my uh, what, what I want for my life and, and where I'm going with my family. You know, we want to have have uh, properties that we have a personal use factor. You know, we mm-hmm. can rent them out when we're not there, but we, can, whenever we want to change, we can hop in the, in the motor home and just go to the, go to the other home. And our family spread out everywhere. Anyways, you know, we got family on the East side, we got family on the West side at California, North Idaho, Oregon. So, uh, for, for us, it just makes more sense to be able to have multiple home, home bases that we can just kind of move, move around in at will. So, um, you know, wholesaling has always been my main thing and, and it's, it's definitely still is, but as I see the market cool a little bit, I'm like, Hmm, I, I want to buy, especially as, as I know, it's going to start going down, you know, none of us have a crystal ball, so we don't know for sure what's going to happen, but I do know that it's, it's not going to keep uh, skyrocketing the way it has been that, that we've seen it recently. So that provides opportunity to buy and start to build your own portfolio. So I'm starting to look seriously into that. Yeah, I think we're doing the same. We're actually like actively looking for sub two houses all over the country, like for every major city. So yep. whoever's watching this, if you, if you come across some sub two deals, yeah, we'll, we'll try to buy it from you, help you close it, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, we would like to have like an established like hive house in every major city where people can go and do deals and learn and research and JV and all that good stuff. So and yeah, all the while, keeping it I love that concept. Yeah. yeah, that's because well, first we were just looking for leaders in each market. Now we're looking for like, uh, let's get some uh, a base in each one. Like here, in the, I'm in the San Antonio place right now. And people just come here all day long and they're just learning and JVing with us, doing deals. We're helping them sell stuff, lock it up. Like here, give me the phone. I got it. <laughs> Throw it on the whiteboard. You know that? So that's been fun. And, and we're also uh, thinking about Airbnbs for like vacations, you know. So we want to start buying up some nice spots, like whatever we can find. So pretty cool. I like the model. I, I, I like the concept. And like I said, getting people together doing deals together. I like the way that you leverage the community, like to say, Hey, I'll teach you how to do what I'm doing. And then they could train other people. So that, that's pretty crazy, man. That's exactly what we're doing. It's like, they will teach you how to do the front end marketing. If we can partner with some of you <laughs> and you can't partner with everybody, but every now and then, yeah, one or two comes through and it makes it all worth it. You know, you help a exactly. hundred people sure. and it costs a lot of time and energy, but if you can do one or two deals with those hundred people, then it makes it all worth it. Mm-hmm. Yep. For sure. So, so tell me, um, Let's, let's kind of pivot back to BotBox. Are you building a community around it? Because um, it sounds like you're going that direction too. And uh, my main question is, how do you find leaders that you can uh, pivot in your group? Are they coming from the community? Because that's something we're seeing as well. We're getting a lot of leaders come up from our own community. And it's, it's kind of cool seeing that. Are you having the same, the same success from that side as well? Oh yeah, we call them the student leaders. So student leaders come on and they help teach some of the Zoom classes, and they're they're always like the successful ones. They're just a step a step ahead of everybody else that can kind of lend a helping hand. And uh, yeah, it's it's great to have that community. Ours is really formed from an inner circle because for the last couple of years, I've I've uh, spent a lot of money on masterminds. I've been joining twenty five thousand dollar masterminds and getting in in these inner circles, and uh, it's just it gives you access and it gives you a network. And being able to work with high level people, if you're in a free Facebook group, you might be able to find some good relationships and, and find some good stuff here and there. But there's also a lot of jokers and there's a lot of garbage or something special about being part of a exclusive, like high end inner circle. Yeah. So um, that's that's what I've built. And, and that's it's great for networking. But we're also doing um, coaching to where we, I'm, I'm teaching people how to be the type of leader that can attract a players. And more importantly than being able to attract a player is how do you retain a players and keep them and build loyalty and lead with core values and lead with vision. So this is really teaching people how to uh, how to grow a team and how to maintain a team, but they're not doing it on their own. And it's not just a coaching program. There's done for you elements to this too. We are an agency. So we help people recruit their team 
and we help them train their team. So we do a group interview. There's a working, uh, uh, a group interview that people go to every single week that's live and they go to that to be sold on the job. So it's people, uh, replying to Facebook, um, uh, job postings, indeed job postings, LinkedIn job postings, and yeah. all of these are, are being sent to this group interview where every week we jump on live and we're selling people on the job and getting them excited about the comp plan and telling them that it's commission based and telling them there's a non-compete, telling them that they have to use their own Facebook account, but ultimately just getting them jazzed. And uh, we, we answer all their questions so that by the end, they're ready to roll. They're ready to jump on and they have a full understanding of what it is. And then once those appointment setters, those commission-based appointment setters on board, they start joining groups. We give them a course to train them, but we also train them live every single week. We have Zoom calls with all of the appointment setters and, and we're going over a lesson. We're doing Q&A. We're going over celebrations and wins and saying, oh, you got a deal. How'd you get that deal? And breaking that down and um, doing screen shares and messenger conversations, really troubleshooting campaigns. If somebody's having a hard time, we can tell them mm -hmm. exactly what they need to do to improve it and get better. Dude, so is this a concept you've been running the whole time? You said like when you were going to train other people to train their new people, is this the exact same model now that you're running? At first, I did this just for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I I transitioned it to, uh, to, to a program with, with my students. So I wanted to bring some done with you mastermind and networking elements and coaching elements with some done for you agency elements and bring them together. And that's what, uh, that's how I created my program. And that's cool. I, it sounds like our, uh, we're, what we're running is very, very similar. So you, you find people, you find leaders, established leaders, of course, help them depending on where they are. Some people are already doing okay. Now they just want to scale. Some people are just getting started. So you want to get them to stage one before you scale. Uh, but you, you're essentially taking these people, training them, creating a community and then having them invite other people so we can train them as well. Hell yeah, man. And that's, that's what attracted me to what you guys are doing. Cause I was, uh, on, on REI reply, I had the software. I was getting ready to ramp up yeah. and launch a campaign on there. And, uh, I like that, that you, you guys are different. You know, you, you have a community, your education is different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, your, your education based versus, uh, like, like the software is almost like an afterthought it, it, education yeah. first. And that's, that's what I love. And, and it reminds me of click funnels, the click funnels community. You know, you, you've got like groove pages and all these other things that are it's just a software. But what makes ClickFunnels special is is the community and, and the coaching side. So, yeah, and that's that's what I like. That's cool, man. You know, and I guess it takes a leader like yourself to identify that because we see it in the groups. It's just like REI Reply. We're like, well, no shit, Sherlock. Is, is REI Reply lending you a hundred grand to take deals down and jumping on the phone with you? Like, I don't know, but I will. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, yeah. Yeah. It's like the community element, us being able to work with other people, JV with other people. Like, that's everything to me, man. And uh, it, it is leaders like yourself, Corey Thompson, you know, a lot of the big names that, uh, that are in real estate that I, when I came into the game, they already had momentum. They all joined. So, you know, I don't, maybe just because they're our friends now, but I mean, they saw the value in it. They see the value in the community, um, having some software so that when you train your people, they have some kind of like uh, structure in their business. All important, man. All that stuff is important. So that's pretty cool that you're running the exact same model. And then we have like a promotion friendly environment as well. So if you wanted to invite your community over, tell them to take a look at what we're doing. And then uh, we would like to expose them to some of the, the tools and resources that you guys have, um, you know, see what we can do to, to, Go further faster you know together for can, sure can i love that uh, chad doherty's question he says i like to learn more details on facebook automation so you can't really automate for posting in facebook groups anymore you'll okay. get banned from facebook so the okay. way that we do it is we use virtual bird dogs that are commission based they get 10 percent of the assignment okay. if a deal closes they use their own facebook account and they go and post in groups for you and that's, that's what we do is we help you recruit people like that and, and we train them for you. Ah, so it's, it's not even, it's not even automation anymore. It's just you, you empower human capital, human capital, human capital yeah. is way more valuable than, than real capital. It's crazy how people undervalue it, but human capital is priceless. Yeah. Like I was saying, I didn't help anybody reach six figures until we made that shift and we started using appointment setters commission-based appointment setters that's when it's like rocket fuel man 
you can't uh, you, you can't beat it. An actual human being there talking to somebody live and, and uh, so, somebody that comes from a sales background, they've worked in call centers or they've done door to door. They've been, they come from multi-level marketing or other wholesalers that want to squat up, you know, struggling wholesalers that just want to squat up with you. Mm-hmm. Those are going to be your best appointment setters. And that's what I, um, I, I really uh, focus on because some people will try to have VAs post in Facebook groups. And there's other companies that teach how to do group, the group thing, and they use VAs to do it. But I find that it's it's far more effective to put a hustler at the wheel than a VA. Uh, I really I really want to talk about this because it's so funny because everybody's like, oh, MLM companies. And like that's what all real estate is. Every, real estate is an MLM company. You leverage your network to make more money. Like we just there's just a there's just a name for it. So everybody's like so against it. It's so funny because like you, you're <laughs> doing it in your own way. We do it in our own way. Everybody kind of takes a variation of that. And it's not even about how what the terminology is. It's just that that type of prospecting, lead generation, team building works in the everyday world. No matter if you're posting on Facebook groups or if you're selling software or selling teas, it's all the same stuff, and it's all based off the same motto: sharing a good product. And that's where it all exactly. comes. Exactly. And, and the type of person that's going to be willing to work a commission based gig like this and be an independent contractor and go and put themselves mm-hmm. out there, it's going to be the same person that's been in MLMs. You know, I've been in MLMs. I'm sure you guys have been. A lot of people that come from the from, from the, uh, the the space, they 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 have been, and and that's that's who I want to attract to this. I don't want a nine to five person at the yeah. wheel. I want a hustler and an, an entrepreneur. Yeah, I had a. a- Go ahead, Anthony. I, was just, I, say, I have a friend named Matt Morrow. He's one of my Facebook friends, and, and uh, dude owns an island. And uh, so I've been following his content for a long time. And one of the quotes he posted on Facebook is uh, he said that I always mess up quotes. I'm famous for it. But he said something to the effect of, you know, getting good at, at multi level marketing, like network marketing, will make you disproportionately better at business, you know, than your counterparts. And uh, this was probably like five years ago or something that he posted that. And that quote never left me because I, I guess I see the same thing that you're seeing is even if you're in a, no matter what business you're in, you're in the business of networking and marketing. <laughs> yeah. So no matter what you, no matter how you feel about it, or no matter what you think about it, like Daniel said, uh, everything that we're doing is, is network based. The more people that we have in that, in, that we're in communication with, the more people we're talking to, the more resources we have, uh, it just, everything points back to like the exact same business model. So I really love it, man. I love to think about it. I, I have a lot of friends that I've met in MLM and they're really, really good friends of mine, like lifelong friends now. So not only does it help you in your business, but also, like I said, you can have friends that are going to go with you for the rest of this life. So I, I really do love the model and the environment. Yeah. 100%. Yep. So tell me, what is, what is something you're looking for when you're looking for a hustler? Cause I think everybody, like, oh, I'm a hustler. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, you're not a hustler, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I think they already yeah. got to be doing it by themselves, don't they? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I want somebody that already, like, like they have some chops. They know how to uh, speak. They, they, they know uh, how to use persuasive speech. They know how to build rapport. Like, I want that stuff already uh, integrated in them. And, and a lot of the times when I'm bringing on sellers, I won't even bring somebody on unless they come from a sales background. And uh, I, I have so many people that come to me from the high ticket sales world from like Dan Locke and uh, from, from all these uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Miner and all, all these like high ticket sales people that they go through this course and they're like, I'm certified. I'm a certified high ticket closer. I'm like, okay, how many, how many uh, high ticket deals have you closed? You say zero, but I'm ready. I've been trained. I'm certified. Like, I don't even want somebody like that in a closing position, in a sales position. I want somebody that's actually been out on the grind and they've been beat up. They've had bad days. They've had their teeth kicked in. That's who I want on my team. No, I'm I'm really glad you mentioned that because a lot of people think like, oh, I I got, I have it in me. It's in me. I'm like, well, where's the results? You would have found a way to produce results by now. And there's no results. So you're, there's something missing. <laughs> yep. Yep, for sure. That, that's, such a, that's such a good. Uh, um, so are you gatekeeping people that come into your thing as well? Because that's something we're, we're looking at Lotus too. Is like once we go into higher level ticket items, we have to gatekeep who comes into that circle because not everybody's ready and even prepared to even go that direction. Um, 
there's a. So, so are you talking uh, about running them through a call before they get to a high ticket closer? Yes. Running a prospect through a call. Yeah, that, it's called a triage call process. And if you check out Cole Gordon, um, he, he, he's, he has an amazing program on this to where uh, leads are being tri triaged and they, they get to talk to somebody before they even get to the closer. And you could do this for real estate too. So for, for those of you that are watching and you're like, man, I'm, I've, my acquisition manager is tired of no shows and, and tired of talking to shit leads. Uh, you, you can have a triage process to where you pop appointment setter um, going in and, and talking to people on the phone before they get to the closer. That way they can be gauged for motivation to make sure that they're actually qualified or they're not listed or that, you know, it's, it's a deal under contract. It's really a wholesaler. Like they can go find that stuff out and go through discovery before it even gets to the acquisition manager. So this triage closer process, I mean, it, it works in the coaching realm. It works in the real estate realm, wherever. Uh, Did you learn this concept from like one of these high coaching uh, or high ticket masterminds? Cole, uh, Cole Gordon. Yeah. Okay. Sick, man. Yeah. Yeah. We're, 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 le we're learning as we go and we're learning stuff we can't do and stuff we can't say. So it's kind of uh, we're failing forward, but it's, it's a good thing though, because like not everybody, you don't know this stuff unless you source or information or you fall on your face. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And that's, what's nice about going through masterminds. Is you can kind of shorten that learning curve and that pain tap into other people's success and just model. It becomes just like kind of copying at that point, you copy your mentor, and just follow in their footsteps and, and you'll have success. And that's, that's, uh, really what I've built with this, this, uh, setter team is, is showing, showing people how to come on. They can make money. Maybe they're a struggling wholesaler and they haven't gotten their first deal yet. And they're just exhausted. And they're about ready to quit. Well, that person can come on and work with me or work with one of my students and be trained by us and be taken under our wing. And I don't have to pay money to hire this person. So what that does for me is I can bring on 10 people at once, 20 people at once even. And I'm not going to go broke looking for my rock stars and A players because if they don't perform, I don't pay them. They only get paid if they get a deal done. So I run it as a sink or swim model. Take a big mm -hmm. group of people. You want run a group interview to, to, uh, to disqualify people and, and to turn people yeah. away that aren't interested in this. So, so they're all grouped interviewed together. And then yep. after that, after the group interview, then they're down to come on. Then they uh, get training and they get one-on-one, -on -one, but nobody ever talks to them until they've jumped through hoops and they've gotten to that process. Then we'll have a bunch of them start at once, knowing the 80-20 rule is strong. So, so we know, you know, 80% of them are going to do nothing and 20% of them are going to be doing all the work. So, uh, and, and that's, that's just something that we know. So we can bring on big groups of people with hopes of retaining just a couple. We find yeah. out who those rock stars are, who the action takers are, the people that are actually doing the required actions. They're posting 13 times a day, every single day from their Facebook account. They're showing up to the team meetings. They're asking questions, they're participating. Then uh, me and my management, we just, we, we laser focus and we hone in on those people. The people that show promise, that's who gets all of our attention. Our attention is limited. We have a limited bandwidth. Yep. So we're not going to pay attention to everybody and mentor everybody and shape everybody that comes in as a setter. It has to be earned. The setter has to show up first before you pour your time into them. Then they prove that they want it. Then you can connect with that person one-on-one, -on -one, get to know them, build a relationship with them, find out about their goals and their dreams and their vision and show them how where you're going is going to be the vehicle to help get them to their vision. No, I'm really glad you covered that because that was a lot. That was a lot. That was gems there. That was gems because we yeah. do the same thing too. Like if, if you're not showing yourself as, as a rising star, I mean, it's just not worth the time to dig dig, dig a hole in, in a, <laughs> on somebody who's not going to make it. Um, AJ from YouTube asked, uh, where can we find these people? And I think it's a great question. And I want to hear your answer on this one. Yeah, man. So uh, there's there's a process and I'm, I'm going to tell you where to find them, but just know that it's really going to be hard to do this on your own. It's going to be a grind. Some people look at this and they're like, oh, you know, this is this is easy money. You know, it's just uh, going to plug it in. It's going to be simple. It's anything that's well. anything that's worth it, anything that's good in life and good in business takes hard work. And building a team and doing work through others and having people to be able to run your business while you're away, that's the most rewarding thing that you could possibly do for yourself and for your business.
But because of that, it's like climbing Mount Everest. So there's a process and I can tell you where to go, but it doesn't mean you're going to be able to do it successfully. And that's why it's good to play, plug into a mastermind or plug into a program where we can help walk you through it. We can do it for you. But I mean, Facebook groups, wholesaler groups, especially newbie wholesaler groups, um, uh, you, you know, squ squatting up with, with people, struggling wholesalers in there. Um, Indeed, Craigslist, ZipRecruiter, um, you know, the, all, all the different job boards, you can go in there and uh, post and, and get people to come in, send them to a group interview. A lot of people are going to be turned away at the group interview. They're either not going to show up to the group interview at all. You invite 30 people, only, only 10 are going to, 10 or 15 are going to show up. Out of that, you might onboard just two people, right? So it's a numbers game and you got to play those numbers. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. So you found people from Craigslist and Indeed and stuff like that. You try to find uh, potential partners off of that. Yeah, I always have my uh, my students start with Facebook groups. It's the easiest way to plug in is just to find wholesale groups to to find appointment setters. Wow, that's a lot of gold right there. That's a lot of gold right there. I hope people get listen to that one because there's a lot of good information there. It's it's hard and it's so hard finding the right people, but once you find them, it's, it's a good time after that. One hundred percent. So so I asked my community. I'm like, what what why don't you team for all of you guys that want to build a team and you don't have one yet? Why is that? And I took all of their answers and compiled them to find out what's keeping people from doing this and uh, the the reasons that came up over and over and over again. The dominating factors where people don't know how to find people. They don't know where to find people they can trust and they don't know how to find the right tools to train them. I'm going to say that again. They don't know where to find people that they can trust and they don't know how to find the right tools to train them up effectively. Wow. Okay. So the way that you overcome that is you have to have good training. You have to have good systems, good on onboarding processes. You have to uh, try to automate some of your, your training. You know, if you, if you know how to do something, then put it together in a series of videos and uh, make it easy for them to follow step-by-step, -step. build out SOP, standard operating procedures to where step-by-step -step copy and paste, like that's a good place to start. So I, I'll attest to this because this is my, up here to my alley because I created all the automations, but people still don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you can set up. You can set up all the opportunity and SOPs and the path for them to win, and they just stop right at the door. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. And for so me, I think that's why I like this community. I like the I like the group settings. That way, you can just come and get the information fresh, you know, from the source. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for, for me, there's, when you have these systems in place, there's only so much you can automate, but you really have to connect with people one-on-one -on -one still. So, so using blends, uh, is, is really helpful and also holding people accountable because uh, this, this happens with us too. I have students all the time. Oh man, I just bring people in a group of people and they're just not doing anything. And that's so common. So the reason that happens is because expectations are not set and there's no, there's no quotas or, or, or set expectations and goals. Uh, for our appointment setters, it's, it's, uh, it's turn and burn. Like you, you got you to come on and there's certain things you got to do or else you're out, right? So I tell people there's requirements and some people get turned off by this. Uh, they're like, oh, you know, I'm an independent contractor, be my own boss. All right, see ya. I'm looking for people that fit in and people that want to be led because you can get put out requirements. It doesn't matter if they're independent contractors. It's your business. It's your show. So you yeah. can lay out expectations. And for us, our expectations are you have to max out your Facebook account. You have to do the maximum amount of posts that you can do five days a week without fail. You have to show up to the team meetings. You have to fill out your, your tracking sheet and your uh, KPI sheet. You have to engage in the team chat and, and communicate and ask questions. And I tell people that we have a limited amount of seats at the table. And if you don't do these things, and unfortunately, we got to let you go because we only have so much bandwidth and we want to focus that on people that are actually following instructions and taking action and, and moving forward.
One thing, one yeah. thing I, re- I really want to hit on, sorry, Anthony, is that um, do you, you have to have the conversation with your people as far as your family might get mad at you, but these posts are not for your family. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, get, I get hit from my brother all the time. I've seen, only seen him a couple of times in the last, few, few, last year or so, but he's always hitting me like, he's like, oh, what's this hive mind stuff? He doesn't, does, still doesn't know what I'm doing. But I'm like, in my head, I'm like, these posts and lives aren't for you. Like, you're not you're not a customer. So it's yeah. not going to be education for you. Do you have to explain that as far as – because family so, family's, family's a double-edged sword. <laughs> yeah. For, for my students, it's different. And for appointment setters that I bring on, is they don't have to worry about that because they hide what they're posting in groups. Oh, okay. Right? Okay, that's so, good. So whatever they're posting in groups will not show up on their timeline, and I show people how to do that. But, oh, uh, you know, I, I, I experienced that personally because I use my personal account for business and sometimes my family is funny about that. So I get that. <laughs> but yeah, so, setters, appointment setters, they, they don't got to worry about that. It's not, a, it's not an issue for them. So AJ here says, how can I apply for the course of virtual wholesaling? Apply for the course for virtual wholesaling? Yeah, it's the, it's the bot box, right? Making text for the link. Yeah, so, yep. That's it right there. You text that number and that is not about virtual wholesaling. That's how to get deals out of Facebook groups. That's going to take you to a free training. That's three secrets to getting deals out of Facebook groups. Now, um, it's not one of those fake webinars where you got to go on and wait 15 minutes. You're like, you'll get instant. You you can start watching it right now. Push play and watch it. So that's that's how you get it right there. I hate those. So for everybody listening, it's 210-972-1842. Just text the word FOX. 210-972-1842 210-972-1842 Fox. So awesome. I made I made an automation for that. And that's a beauty about automation. So now it's gonna be out there forever. And oh yeah. Is- <laughs> Love it. That's the power. That's the power of it. That's the power of Hive. There you go. There you go. Um, let me see what else. Uh, man, it's we have a, we've had a lot of questions come up on YouTube. So appreciate everybody participating on the live streaming platforms out there. This is live. Um, and you have a question, Anthony? I know I cut you off a second ago. Um, no, I was just going to just commend you on the way that you kind of like build a, a moat around yourself. Like it's kind of the same thing that we do. So people ask us all the time, like, hey, do you guys have a mentorship, like a one-on-one mentorship? And I, I've already heard from a lot of coaches that that crashes and burns pretty quick. So I knew early on that if we were going to teach what we're doing, then it needs to be in a group setting. And so what we do is, of course, we do the, the group training, ask anything you want. We don't have no secrets, no paywall. Uh, we'll teach you what to do. But the mentorship goes, I'll teach you what to do, but then now you got to go do it. And um, we know who's out there working because they're calling us back saying, hey, I think I got a deal. Hey, can you take a look at this? So you know, it doesn't take too long to filter people out, you know, to know who's out there working and then who's just gathering as much knowledge as they can until their head's like this big and they still haven't made a move yet. So <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, we're looking yeah, to sure. get people to take action. That's it. And then the, the cream will rise to the top. People will call you and say, hey, I got something. Can you guys help me? Can you buy this? Can you do something with it? Like, yep, let's Some do it. We'll run into analysis paralysis for sure. So for those of you that are uh, using that link and you're taking advantage of that, the best thing I can ask you is just uh, don't sit there and, and put it to waste and just get, go into information gathering mode. So many people do this and they can't they can't get out of this mode to where there's information gathering and they're not delegating anything that they that they take in. Like uh, how, how many how many people are watching this where they've watched. 10 different lives within the, the last week, but haven't implemented or changed anything within their business. Like, don't be that person. Yep. Make sure that you take action. You actually implement some of these golden nuggets and some of these things that are being given to you. Now, people spend a lot of money to get this information. You guys are getting it for free right now. So do something with it, please. And it'll make an impact on you your, know, I, I, your life. Hey, Amen. Pull the trigger. Pull the trigger before you think about it. So I'm a ready fire aim guy. And uh, I, I heard the word wholesaling like mid-December, like in 2018. And I had all of my like campaigns already up and running by like January 1, dude. It's like 14 days since I heard the word wholesaling. And I was already, I was marketing full speed. Nice. <laughs> in a waste nice. of time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, that's part some, of it. Yeah. And for some people, you know, it's uh, burning the boats might not be for them. And that's okay. Like they might want to keep their job and do this as a side hustle until it replaces their income. There's nothing wrong with that. I maybe should have done that. I didn't make money for the first six months. So, uh, you know, it's 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 not for everybody to do. But um, when I made that decision, it definitely helped me learn fast. Uh, just full immersion um, definitely helps. But 
again, you can get that from a good community. You can get that from my community. You can get it from the guys at, at Hive Mind, and uh, just be able to tap into other people's knowledge, and it's going to help you get there get there so much faster. We have a free Facebook group that you can join. We have this community. It's uh, uh, it's all about group marketing. So if you go to the website and you watch that training at the bottom of the training video, there's a link to get you into that Facebook group. And we have expert interviews every couple of weeks. We're bringing people on to, we've had big names. We have uh, Elijah Rubin, Charles Hernandez, uh, Carlos Reyes, uh, Peter Vexelman. Um, there's all kinds of big names coming on and just dropping knowledge and drop, dropping gold. And we, we, uh, uh, constantly putting out free trainings and five day challenges and, and, uh, PDFs and swipe files, uh, ourselves. So you can get, get in that group and get all kinds of good knowledge. Now for, for those of you that don't want to go to, uh, the pay, actually, never mind. just go to the page because it's going to tie it to, to you guys, uh, to, to your automation that you set up. So if you want to get in the group, text that number and, uh, you'll, you'll be able to access it. Um, what is a quote that is yours or somebody else's that you resonate with? Um, done beats perfect. I don't know exactly who said that, but, uh, my, my coach says it all the time. My mentor says it all the time. And, uh, that's something that really helped me get past some of my personal issues and limiting beliefs. Uh, cause it, you know, when you, when you get into analysis paralysis, you, um, you, you don't do anything, right? Because you're scared to fail, but those who avoid failure also avoid success. So you have to embrace failure. And so, so that done be perfect. That's, that's definitely, um, one of my favorites. That's a good yeah, one. done be perfect. Yeah, I feel that. That's that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, like I I failed at so many different things, man. I I get the call all the time. It's like people say, man, everything you touch turns to gold. You're so lucky. Like, man, I, I freaking worked my face off, dude. I, I failed at so many different businesses, but I don't take time to ponder it or think about it. I just keep rolling, keep moving. So yeah, uh, take some another action. And that's the best was, way. To learn. Um, another good one was from Jim Rohn. Said that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, those who work on their career make a living, but those who work on themselves make a fortune. Yeah, I like it. You're on fire, man. Those are good. Those are good. <laughs> yeah, I had to go old school. Jim Rohn. <laughs> I like, yeah. like Jim Rohn, man. Every now and then I'll throw on like a Jim Rohn or a Bob Proctor or something, get, get a dose from the old school on YouTube yeah. and just listen to it for a little while. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, they got some good stuff. You almost never catch me listening to the radio. <laughs> I'd rather yeah. be listening to podcasts or some some kind of other madness. Man, there's also there's all kinds of cool stuff out there, and I love that you guys are teaching sub two in your program as well. Um, or you you're you're doing sub two. I don't know if you teach it to your community, but you guys are doing it. Yeah, we we talk about it all the time, man. Yeah, we we pick up these uh, farms and ranches and houses and everything like almost where people just give you the deed. And then you turn around and figure out what to do with the property after that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've, uh, you know, done a little bit of that, but I haven't had it be a main focus. And as I'm wanting to, to get these Airbnbs and I'm trying to build a team around that, like specialists, that's all they do is getting those sub two deals, um, locked down. And uh, lease options are interesting too, you know, depending on, on the seller's motivation and what they're looking for, that might be a better option for them. But uh, all these different creative, ways to get deals done are so interesting because you can pay a lot more. You can work on tighter margins, you know, pay a little bit closer to retail, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we specialize in that a lot. And I, I talk about this all the time. So when I get to a, a property or I'm talking to a seller, I'm not trying to buy it in cash. I'm looking for a creative deal. And that's kind of where I, I take the person in their mind is I'm, I'm trying to find out how can we work together on this? How can we partner on this thing? Like the last thing in the bucket is like a wholesale deal, you know, trying to make them a cash offer. That's the last thing I can possibly think of. First things first is like, you know, what do you want to do with this property? What can we do to, to, to help you with it, take control of it? I think of it like partnering with the seller. Um, but yeah, if we can take it sub to creative, uh, I've done stuff where I've done like zero down, zero payment, zero interest until sold. Like I've done all kinds of weird stuff just because I didn't know what else to do. And then now that I'm actually learning about more like formal strategies and the way that other people are doing it, I'm like, okay, that makes sense too. But I was already putting these deals together before I even knew 
that you could do that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Sure man. That. For sure. Yeah. We're, look, we're looking at a farm right now for uh, 2.6 mil and we're offering the guy a hundred thousand down, no payments, no interest for 18 months or until sold. So you know, tr trying to take control of a $3 million asset with a hundred grand. <laughs> yeah. And now with gotta shoot your shot, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, now with foreclosures picking up, you know, there's, there's uh, going to be a wave of those coming in. So the, those opportunities are going to become even better for uh, creative finance and subject to. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting time, man. I'm, I'm wondering what's going to happen for the next year or two. Yeah. Cause we are moving into some strange times, but yeah, I think the opportunities are going to start to pop up uh, faster than we can kind of account for them. Yeah. So I that's probably part of having a big team, having a lot of people out there looking for this kind of stuff. And that, I think that's why we built a community based like marketing engine is um, it's like it's a lot of these deals are few and far between. Right. But if we had enough people out there looking, then you tend to come across them more often and then we could work our magic and try to, you know, pitch some of our creative juice. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys ever do a multifamily? You go after that? Dude, I have never done it. And now like my my interest level is at an all time high. So I really prefer to go after some, some self storage because I think it'd be less headaches, less maintenance, less all that stuff. Um, right. but we are looking now we're, we're looking at multifamily. I think I've probably helped underwrite maybe three or four in the last couple of weeks. So yeah, if anybody comes across any multifamily deals, I have buyers, uh, I'm interested in buying, if we can do some kind of like syndication, I have a friend that does syndication. Um, so I'm really, really interested in that space. I mean, it seems like it's about the same amount of work. And then, um, you know, it's like, if, if it's the same work, same everything, then yeah, let's take a look at some of those. We interviewed a uh, Tim Bratz a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, so my, he got my commercial engine fired up in my brain and then he released some kind of new platform now that he's pushing out where you can go and, uh, gather a bunch of commercial leads very easily. And then it's, it's like all helps like market to those and all that. So I think we're going to jump on that pretty quick here. Cause we've been interested in commercial for a while. Yeah. Yeah, man, I tell you what, when traveling all across the country, what I see a lot of shortage on is RV storage, RV mm -hmm. storage, uh, um, boat storage, stuff like that. And uh, even RV spots. And that's something that I've thought about, too, with uh, uh, getting into some land deals and holding on to mm -hmm. some land and, and making a making making an RV park. Because, dude, I've, I'm seeing some of those places as, as I stay there because I'm traveling all over. And some of them are booked out six months, some of them booked out a year or more, and they're just always full, always full and, and uh, making a ton of money. And all this is a slab and some power, some water, and that's it. You don't even need this slab, man. You could just do like a, like a, a base, you know, like a road base. Just throw a little stack on there, flatten it out. Let's go. Put some electric. <laughs> yeah. I've even <laughs> or, I've, or I've, I've seen people do this in their private property. You know, they there's um, uh, websites you can go to and you can rent directly from an, a homeowner that lives on some land and they have some RV spots out in their out in their property and, and plugins and everything mm -hmm. is crazy. So even even some homeowners are doing this to to, uh, you know, get it, help pay for that property that they're living in. Some of them are making yep. it, uh, more than paying for the property. They're actually making money, making a living at it. So, yeah, that's crazy. I think that's why I love the land game, man. It, it kind of leads to everything. If you start with land, I mean, you, you can literally go into anything. So you can sell like multifamily land, commercial, uh, retail. You can do developments. You can flip, farm, ranch, you know, sell to builders. There's just so many different exit strategies to me in land. It's like I can't get away from it. And it's funny too, because like, I think everybody else, like immediately everybody went to houses and they ask us like, who buys that? Like, what do you guys do with the land? And then it's, it's kind of a funny question because I could see it from their point of view, like, what the hell do you do with land? And then in my mind, I'm like, I have like 87 exit strategies now. So yeah, I love it. I love to look for it. <laughs> Stuff like that. Nobody's thinking about, you know, like RV storage or boat storage. Like you literally don't need anything. Like you just pull in, drop the boat on the ground and leave and you're good. You're charging yep. them by the month for that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. Man, and that's just, that's just money there. So that, that's what's fun about this game is there's so many things that you can do, so many different directions. Multifamily is interesting yeah, too. Yeah. I've been I've been looking into that. Is that it's not something I've really done. I haven't done any multifamily, but I have some uh, good friends that are they're also coaches and they're big in the space and they, and they purchase deals uh, virtually and they're they're buying apartments all over the United States and not never going and seeing them themselves. It's all virtual. Yeah, I was, I was following a guy's training on uh, YouTube and he's a commercial broker. I think he's in Tennessee or something. 
And I just clicked, randomly clicked on one of his videos, something commercial. I'm interested in commercial. And then he's talking about it. He's like, man, this is the exact same thing. He's like, so the same way that you can pick up a sub two or creative finance, you could pick up a building, you could pick up a self storage, you could pick up anything with the same model. So that's kind of like the light bulb came on in my mind and it never turned back off is that, you know, we can push into anything. So I, I, I think ha capturing houses is cool. I got a couple of sub two houses, but it's like, if I can capture a shopping center or a million square foot self storage with some kind of creative finance, like, eh, I want to at least want to take a crack at it. Right. Let's, let's yeah. see if we can find one yeah. or, or market to those. And like, again, if it's, if it's the exact same game, right. Just signing a handful of documents, a little bit of follow up and a little bit of creativity, then it'd be silly to not go after commercial. It's the exact same game. Yeah, look at Grant Cardone, you know, so it started out of nowhere, didn't really know much, much about it. Yeah. And within no time, it's I've, I followed Grant for a long time back, even when I was doing door to door. And this is before he was mm -hmm. even in real estate. And I just watched him uh, build that business and, and build it into this uh, billion dollar portfolio just out of nowhere. So it's it's pretty interesting, pretty cool stuff. But you can make a ton of money in the short term <laughs> rental game, too. I mean, that's that's huge. And short term rentals, the prices at the nightly rates for those just keep climbing like crazy. Uh, so, so that's going to be a very profitable thing too. The thing is, is if you guys are looking for anything like short term rental, never buy a property based off of those numbers because anything, anytime something happens or there's a recession or people are, are tightening up their, their wallets, the, the first thing that gets hit is the travel industry and, and vacation rental mm -hmm. industry and the COVID. I mean, they took a pretty big hit when that uh, all the lockdowns were happening. So you have to have a backup exit strategy and always buy for at least a long term rental or something that you can resell without losing your ass. And that will keep you safe. <laughs> That's a good tip right there. Make sure that you buy at normal rent rates. Don't don't count on making a, a killing. I'm going to kill it in Airbnb like you might you might not. Like just yeah. st still buy conservatively. Yeah, deal's a deal. That's a good tip. Yep, exactly. Cool, man. Well, I, I think this was a fun show. Uh, do you have anything else in closing you want to share with the with everybody? Uh, let, let them know where else we can find you. You can text the word FOX to the customer service number with HiveMind. And then uh, where can they find you online on socials? Um, you, You'll find me if you go to that link. You you opt into the the, the website. So you get the training at the bottom of the training and i said link i meant text so so you text that number you'll be given a link mm -hmm. follow that link opt in and then you'll be able to watch the training video right underneath the training video is how you connect with me on facebook and how you join the facebook group for all my all my free training and all my free give, giveaways and you guys can connect with me personally too and the training helps you find bird dogs yeah yeah so um i have tons of training yeah, I got free it training. It gives you the recruiting structure. Sorry, I just kind of heard an <laughs> echo there. <laughs> so no, I said, uh, does, does the training, and does it explain to you like the team building side of everything as well? So are you talking about my free training in the in the group or are you talking about my program, my done with you program? Uh, maybe both. <laughs> okay. Because you said it's like a team, a team uh, building model, right? Yeah. So inside of my group, I have a ton of training. In fact, I have this uh, mini course. It's a free mini course that you can get inside of my free group, which you will get by texting Fox to that number. But uh, if, you, if you go into the group, you'll find the mini course. And it's uh, how to hire people you can trust and find the right tools to train them. So it solves those two major issues for you. Uh, and that's completely free. It's not something I charge for. My, uh, my done with you program is completely different. That's a paid program. It's a, it's a high level program. So it's a, you know, it's not, it's not cheap. I like to tell people that from right out the gate. So they know what they're getting into is you get what you pay for. And and with this, I mean, this is hardcore. We're, we're doing a lot. So we're actually going in and mentoring you and coaching you. You get, you get to be part of this high level inner circle community. Plus we're helping you build your team in house. Now, a lot of you guys, when you think about agency, you think about a lead generation agency where people come along and, and uh, they use their resources to go and find leads for you. And then you just get a spreadsheet with some leads on it. That's, that's a typical agency. That's not what we do. Instead, we build the resource. Instead of using our resources, we build the resources in house for you. 
We help you recruit your team. We show you where to find them. We're doing the group interview for you. So we're selling them on the job. Plus we're training them for you. So there's done for you elements to where we're helping you source and train your team and build them in-house to where by the time you graduate, it's a three-month program. By the end of the three months, you're not going to need me anymore. And your, your team is going to be in-house and you own the processes around it. Oh, that's insane, man. That's exciting. Yeah, so you're kind of like building to soar. Once it's all built and set up, you're good now. Yep, exactly. And I'm right there, right? That's why it's called the Done With You program because I'm right alongside you building it with you and you get access to me every single week and uh, every day, in fact, and, uh, you know, helping you get that team built and find those rock stars and A players because we don't want you just to hire any warm bodies. We want you to find the best of the best and we want to train you how to become the type of leader that can retain those types of people and attract those types of people because they don't just work for anybody. They want strong leaders. So we show you how to become that strong leader. That's perfect, man. I love it. I'm, I, I think we need to continue this conversation. Um, I have some stuff I'd probably want to talk to you on, on the phone about so we can try to see how we can pursue this and push this model a little bit harder. But I dig it, man. Yeah. Let's let's uh, let's get it. Let's do this again. I'm, I'm going to yeah, send you a awesome. message, actually. You can jump on a call sometime later this week. For sure. Sounds good. Thanks so much for having me on here. And, and thanks for being here. Hive Minds. Awesome, brother, man. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you soon.